Morning. It's been a while since I've uh, been on here to do a live. Um, I just was really feeling called and convicted this week. Um, I have been struggling in my head. Um, and I just, after I read my post sometimes, I'm like, ugh, I sound so negative. I'm generally not a negative person. Like, if you know me, you know that that's just not really my style. Um, but I just feel like God is really moving in my life, and sometimes that feels messy. Um, sometimes it feels uncomfortable. I feel like any time I've ever been in a season of growth, um, it's more painful than it's not. And really just learning to lean in to the word. Um, and this is a message that I have felt on my heart for a very long time, but I, like most situations in my life, I'm just not very obedient. So I am working to um, really live by my Holy Spirit conviction instead of my fleshy desires to be selfish and not share. Um, so in an attempt to share what God has put on my heart, I just, I just really feel called um, because I know that growing up um, in a church, listening to a message of salvation alone and not really, you know, how do you come back from your mess? Um, it led me to make very poor decisions. You know, we sing all these kids in, or sing all these songs as kids in Sunday school and we talk about Zacchaeus in a tree and we, you know, we just sing about all these people in the Bible. And I just, I feel like sometimes if we knew all the messes, if we knew all the truth, if we actually sat down to study what the Bible says, we, we can really feel, um, God make a change in us. And so I've read through the Bible. The first time I read it, it took me almost two years. Um, when I was, you know, attending a church uh, with my pastor and now friend, uh, Ben Stuckey, he just really encouraged us to read the Bible. Don't make it, don't do it in a year. Don't like just spend time in the word. Like make sure you are reading the Bible. If it takes you 10 years to read one chapter, but you study it, understand it, and apply it to your life, like that's the point. So in the world that we live in today, like we don't talk about heaven and hell enough, in my opinion. Um, I think that so many times we think of Jesus as this man who walked the earth and, you know, we believe that he exists, but his death and resurrection, like the resurrection has actually been historically proven fact. So when, you know, Jesus dies, we see him take his last breath on the cross. He says, it is finished. The veil and the temple tears. And that is the, the sign that the Old Testament, the rules and law of man is no longer. And Jesus himself, the perfect lamb, has been sacrificed on our behalf so that we don't have to go to hell. Three days later, Jesus raises from the dead. And for 40 days, 40 days, he walked on the earth. He was, he made it very apparent. He made it very clear to people that he had died. Many people had witnessed his death. I mean, the guards were at the grave. And then we go to see him walk on the earth. His resurrection, his life after death has been historically proven fact. This was proven by atheists. So we read in scripture that we know that not everyone is going to go to heaven. But I think sometimes if we've been hurt by the church, we don't really understand why Jesus's love is different than a person's. I know that I have been the reason that many people have made poor decisions in their lives. Um, even still, just lately, like God really calling me to the legalism in my meal plan and my workouts instead of just trusting and obeying what he has for me. And, you know, I'm constantly reminded of all these people. And I just wrote down a few of them. Um, you know, Moses in the Old Testament, Moses heard the audible voice of God. God literally came down and spoke to Moses, yet he still doubted him. He still said, I'm not qualified to share the message. So God gives him Aaron. We see Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah wanted a baby so badly. 
and it wasn't happening. They were old. She was like 90 and he was like 100. And God promised them that they would have a child. But they were so in a hurry because they thought they were getting to the end of their lives that she gives him her maidservant and they have a baby. And Ishmael goes on. This is why we're in war in Israel today and why there has always been unrest in the Middle East. Because Abraham and Sarah pushed ahead of God's plan. God still used them to do his work. We all come from Abraham. We think about Peter. Peter knew Jesus. He walked with him through his ministry. Three years, he slept with him. He ate with him. Slept beside him, you know what I mean? He ate with him like he had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yet, when, when he was arrested, Peter denied him three times. We see Thomas. All the disciples had witnessed Christ's resurrection. And Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it until I see the nails in his hands. And then we see Paul in the New Testament after Christ had res resurrected. Paul was literally going out, seeking out Christians and murdering them in the name of God. Because according to his religion, Christians were bad. Until God blinds him on a path and completely sets his life on a different course. And that is the power of Christ's death and resurrection. There are so many people out there who just don't want a part of God because they've been hurt. And I get it. I've been there. I was there. I left church for 15 years and I went on my own path. I was raped when I was 19 years old. And because someone told me it was my fault, instead of getting on my knees and giving my struggles to God. I had been saved five years before. I knew I had a personal relationship, yet I still thought that my sin, that shame that, that she put on me, my sin was too much. He couldn't handle it. And that was so far from the truth. And it led me to 15 years of poor decisions, unhealthy relationships, binge drinking. I gained 100 pounds. Like when I think back, even now to the struggles that I face and that I bring on my own self. Today, after my workout, I had a good cry. Um, one of my clients, Marlene, she sent me this email that she wrote this last week after she was going through some struggles. I've read it, I don't know how many times, and I'm just letting it go. The power of the gospel says that we can give all our struggles and cares to him and he will take them. We try to control so many things about our lives. So many things. I've had a very consistent income through the first part of the year. And in the past couple of months, it has taken a crap. And it's frustrating. And I keep thinking, I'm doing all of these things that you're telling me to do. Why am I being punished this way? And it's not a punishment. I am being obedient, for the most part, to all the things that he's told me to do. We base all of these things ideas of success on the kind of car we drive, the kind of income we earn, the kind of house we live in, the kind of clothes that we wear. And it just doesn't matter. How do we serve and love other people today? And my way to serve and love you today is to share with you that if you know God and you have a personal relationship and maybe you've like walked away from that or you feel shame or something that maybe you haven't dealt with, get your Bible out. It's not enough to just read a devotional. We need to be having that intentional time with him every day. We need to be in the word every day. Every day. One verse. Our workout group right now is studying Romans 12.1. It is our theme for November and probably for the rest of our lives. We are writing it down. We're reading it out loud. We are memorizing it. And we are living our lives to that verse for the foreseeable future. It's never too late to come back. If you have never experienced salvation in your life, bow your head and just ask him, if you're real God, give me a sign. Put your heart in me. Let me feel your peace. He will. You are never, ever too far from the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus. He died for you on a cross. Every single person that you will ever encounter or not encounter in this world has been created. They were given a purpose before Genesis 1. We read in scripture that before the world was created, he knew our name. 
He had a purpose in mind for us. He knew your name. He knew your struggles. He knew your weak points. He knew that you would fall short and he died the most horrible, wretched death that anyone could ever die for you. Your sin is not too big for the grace of Jesus. And anyone who knows and has that personal relationship will tell you that. We make it like it has to be this big thing. It doesn't. For me, when I came back, I had a conversation with him in my car. I was on my way to work. I was listening to a worship song. It just like I was so filled with the Holy Spirit that it was like I couldn't wait to just confess my sin. And every day now is my like my repentance is the biggest part of my daily prayer. You are never too far from God's love. Not everyone's going to go to heaven, but by golly jeepers, can't we start sharing him in a way that makes people at least want to be interested in what would it what it would mean to have that relationship? In Romans, we read that Paul says for, let's see, Romans 10, 9. The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Saved. Anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. All you have to do is say that prayer. It's simple. Romans 10, 1. The Bible, the U version is a free Bible app. If you don't have a Bible at home, download it, read it, and just ask him. If you've never talked to him before, just ask him, like, are you there? Do you see me? Sometimes when I feel far away from him, I'm like, do you see me, Lord? He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Sometimes we push him aside because we want to take our own path. And our pastor a couple weeks ago, he's like, you know, you have the world's path and you have God's path. And you can either take the world's path or you can take God's path. And for me, I always think there, I think there's three paths because I have my own path and I don't want to walk with the world's path. But I know sometimes I'm not always walking on God's path. But I want to. I've learned in 41 years that I have control over nothing. And the more I try to control it, the more he shows me that I am not in control. People will always disappoint you. The church will disappoint you because it is made up of people. People will disappoint you. We are all fleshy sinners. But guess what? We've got the grace of Jesus because he died and rose again. And when he ascended into heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to live in a believer. So if you pray that prayer in Romans 10, 9, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You will feel it. You'll feel it. You will feel that peace that passes all understanding. And it won't make sense to you. It doesn't make sense to you. And the closer and closer and closer you get to God, the more you ache to conform to his image. The more you want to ask him, okay, Lord, what am I going to do today? How am I going to schedule my day today? What am I going to eat today? How am I going to react to my cranky coworker? How am I going to spend my money that you've blessed me with? How am I going to love my spouse today? We complicate Jesus so much. We we focus on rules and religion that he doesn't care anything about. Jesus was crucified by religious people. They were so bent on their rules and the way it had to look and should look that they didn't understand that God sent him in human form, came down, manifested himself as a man and walked perfectly for 33 years. They couldn't understand that because they were so gripped to the rules of Moses. But when that temple tore, when Christ when he died, he said, it is finished. The old rules have been thrown away. The only thing that you need in your life is Jesus. And when you have that personal relationship, you want to love people more. You see people as he sees them. Worthy and chosen. Every single person that you meet, even that person that you struggle with, was created in the image of God. Every single person on this planet. And we are to love and serve people with the passion that Jesus did. You hear it oftentimes like, let's make heaven crowded. Yes, but let's talk about hell is a real place. The devil believes in Jesus. He knows that Jesus died and rose again. He knows that. It's not enough to just know it. 
Study it if you don't believe that the resurrection actually happened. Study it for yourself. Dig into the history. Because living in hell is not sunshine and margaritas. It is an eternal hellfire. You can, your thirst will never be quenched. There will never be water. You are basically burning from the inside out in the hottest flame that has ever existed. Do you want to live that life? Is your pride so thick because you've been hurt by a person and a church that you're willing to sacrifice your eternity? I hope not because Jesus is bigger than that person that hurt you. Hell is real and people will go there. It's not enough to do good works. It's not enough to donate all your money or donate your time. It is personal relationship with Christ, not the rules and the crap of the Old Testament. Okay, it is the new covenant. When he ascended into heaven, that was it, folks. When he rose from the dead, that was it. You are never too far from his grace. If you do not understand what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus, message me. Reach out to someone. Get a Bible. Start reading the U version. Pray over. Ask him. If you don't know how to pray, just say, okay, Lord, I don't really know what this means. Can you, can you explain it to me? I do that all the time. Daryl and I are reading in Numbers. If you've ever read the Old Testament, it's kind of painful at times. You read about the cubits and the sacrifices and why you needed 130 shekels of this and 60 oxen of this. The rules were so specific back then. God cared about the details then. And he cares about the details now, just in the not in the rules of the law. He cares of the details of your life, which is why he sent the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, people actually had to travel to the tabernacle to meet with God. And if God was there, his presence was in a cloud over the tent. They could go in. They could offer their sacrifices. They could receive forgiveness and go on about their day. You can repent and ask God into your heart at any second of the day. Pray the sinner's prayer in Romans 10. That's it. And then ask him every day, how can I be more like you? How can I love and serve people? Because that's all Jesus did. He loved people and he served them. He washed the disciples' feet knowing that Judas would betray him. Peter would deny him. Thomas would doubt him. He picked 12 of the weirdest dudes in history to go on to make the biggest impact in religion, in, in our faith that we ever have experienced. Twelve fishermen and construction workers and singers, like the weirdest array of dudes. He will use you too. You are never too far from his grace. Peter denied him three times. Yet Peter went on to be one of his favorite people. When that rooster crowed the third time and Peter was like, oh my gosh, he told me I would deny him. My best friend, my teacher, I denied him. Jesus still used him. He will use you too. You're going to fail every day if you're like me. But his grace is sufficient. And when you can't forgive yourself, his forgiveness will take hold until you can see that you are worthy because he's called you worthy, because you're created in his image. He knew you before the creation of the world. You have a purpose. You are meant to live life. You are meant to worship yourself, your body, because you are God's temple. They used to have to go to the temple, like I just told you, to make the sacrifices and all of those things. But when Christ died and ascended, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you. So you now are the temple. The way you act, the way you love, all of those things are a reflection of Jesus in your life. Maybe you need to love people better. Maybe you need to listen to people better. Maybe you need to forgive yourself. I don't really know what that looks like for you. I know for me, it's constantly realizing that I don't know everything, that I'm never in control. And that is kind of a hard lesson to learn, especially, you know, when it's continual. Like, oh, yeah, I don't actually know anything, Lord. Please forgive me for trying to take control of my life. I'm letting it all go. Do you hear me, Marlene? I'm letting it all go. 
I don't want to control my business. I don't want to control my body. I don't want to control this book. I don't want to control this baby. I want my life to be a living reflection of him. He's proven it to me time and time again. My dad is sober. My husband moved in next door just like I prayed for. He will answer big prayer. Be specific. Be big with your prayers and let him reveal himself to you in a mighty, mighty way. But if you haven't made that confession with your mouth that he is the Lord of your life, you will not go to heaven. And if that scares you, if you're like, I don't really know what all that means, message me, reach out to somebody. Don't spend eternity in hell because someone from church hurt you. I hope this message has blessed you today. Seriously, if you have questions, if you have struggles, if you don't really know what all this means, please reach out to me. This was not a message I intended on sharing or wanted to share, but I just, I feel like there are so many lost people out there that are seeking comfort in food, in sex, in sexual immorality, in porn, and spending money that they don't have. Like it, we become obsessed with things that just don't matter. The only thing that matters is that we love other people and we show the love of God to other people so that they know that this is not about religion. This is about a personal relationship with a man who died for you, who rose again, knowing, knowing that you would disappoint him. He loved you anyway. He sacrificed himself anyway. Don't take that gift for granted. We are never promised tomorrow. If you get to the end of your life and you haven't made that decision, it's not going to be good. Lay down your pride. Swallow the fear. Ask the question. Just try to connect with him. If you don't know what to say, just say Jesus. Do you see me? Show me, reveal yourself to me and let the power of the Holy Spirit wash down your arm. You'll feel a trickle or a tingle. You'll see maybe something or somebody will say something to you. His presence is everywhere. You just have to be in tune with what's going on in the world. <sighs> Pretty heavy stuff. He loves you, even when you can't love yourself. Romans 10, go read it.